here we go. Hello there, welcome to the channel. My name is Ryan, I'm a former F-15E combat fighter pilot, F-16 Thunderbird pilot, and commercial pilot. Today we're gonna to break down the F-15 EX. I'm gonna show you some cockpit footage from my time in the F-15E, talk about a little bit of comparison between the F-15E and the F-15 EX, and stay to the very end of the video for the bonus round where we'll dive into the advanced radar of the F-15 EX. This thing is sweet. You're gonna to wanna to stay for that. And before we get going, please dominate that like button, maybe even subscribe. Here we go. So the F-15 EX was sold to the US government as the replacement for the F-15C, the air superiority fighter. The thing I really like about the F-15 EX though is that it can do both. It's a jack of all trades where it can be the air superiority fighter where it should not be able to be contested just like the F-15C has never lost an air-to-air -air fight. Let that sink in for a second. That's pretty incredible. So to take that legacy and then intertwine that into the next generation of F-15 just makes sense. So focusing on air superiority first is kind of the way that I see the F-15 EX being built. It's able to be operated with a single pilot. It could go out there and most likely if it's operated single pilot, it's going to go out there and operate air to air only. Obviously it could do both. It could be a multi-role fighter with one pilot, but it has the ability to throw a weapon systems operator in the back who can then run the pod, the different air to ground radars and other systems, which this thing integrates with. So it kind of gives it the best of all worlds. So you could supply squadrons with this and have an F-15 EX squadron that's focused on air superiority and that's all they do. And then you could have a multi-role F-15 EX squadron where they've got Wizzos, they've got pilots, where they're focused on multi-role, air interdiction, deep strike, and other low-level strike capabilities of the F-15E that it currently has and integrating that into the F-15EX. And this is similar to what happens in the Navy with F-18 squadrons. There's F-18 squadrons that are focused on electronic attack. There's F-18 squadrons focused on multi-role fighting and then air superiority fighting as well with the single seat F-18s being the primary for an air-to-air -air role. So a big part of the F-15EX is this thing's like a glorified Lego set. It's got a digital backbone where you can plug and play new technologies. Now the F-15E has that as well, but the F-15EX is just the next evolution and the next step of making it incredibly user-friendly for maintenance crews, design crews, pilots, whizzos to go in and change the way this thing works and integrates in the digital battle space. And that's called a open systems architecture that allows it to integrate with satellites, drones, other types of war fighting capabilities. So it really makes it this super user friendly weapon that can be applied across a lot of different domains in the battle space. Oh, and by the way, just a little add on, just a little addition. This thing can carry hypersonic weapons, which is an advantage over like an F-35 or F-22, which needs to carry its weapons internal. The hypersonic weapons are much larger than your traditional conventional weapons. So you need more space to carry that. So the F-15EX is the perfect platform Form for that. You're going to attach these hypersonic weapons to the wings or to the CFTs, which are the conformal fuel tanks. And that's going to be the pristine way to carry a hypersonic weapon. And that way you don't have to shorten it or change it up to get it to fit inside some internal bay in the F-35 or F-22. And one of the biggest things when it comes to fighter jets, yeah, you want to be good at offense, but what do they say? The best offense is a good defense. So the fact that this thing has great defensive capability is huge. And that defensive capability is called electron warfare and electronic survivability so it's got the ability to detect threats that are trying to attack and kill it and kill it. those threats first before they get the first launch opportunity and that's just a good defense you have the ability to integrate lots of different sensors lots of different detectors that can tell you where threats are coming from that could be service to air missiles it could be launches from other aircraft it could be electronic attack from other aircraft so the fact that it has a great suite of electronic warfare is just a huge plus for the EX and then as a pilot, as an F-15E Strike Eagle pilot, it's awesome to see the usability and user-friendly nature of the cockpit. When I look at this thing, it just makes me salivate a little bit. I get a little bit excited because at the end of the day, the F-15E was great, but the screens on that thing were small. They needed updating. And the front seat, sometimes it was difficult with the sun shining on the screens, whatever the case may be. The different angles with low light or different contrasts in the horizon or whatever you're facing, the environmentals made it challenging sometimes to see the radar, to see the different screens. So the fact that this has 
big screens that you can use is just a huge advantage. The bigger the better in this case. Sometimes that's not always the case, but that's definitely the case. Here, don't let anybody tell you otherwise. <laughs> when I look in the back seat and I see the massive screen that the Wizzo can have and use, it just makes me think back to the days where I would see Wizzos taking maps and covering their helmet to keep the sun from shining in so they can look at this little tiny screen, this little tiny soda straw screen while they're running the pod. That would be like the lightning pod or the sniper pod that they're using to find different targets on the ground. They literally had to cover themselves to keep the screens from washing out or graying out with the different environmentals that you face in all kinds of different situations that you'll find yourself in in combat. So it really does come down to how usable is this aircraft? How well can the air crew integrate with it? How well can the air crew use it? Because if it's easier to use, the screens are bigger, you're able to get more information, it does what's called increase your essay, which is situational awareness, and that's huge. That's the name of the game in fighter jets. So what I'm picking up from this F-15EX is this is gonna be a huge force multiplier because it does increase your situational awareness by allowing you to just kind of breathe and see what's going on without having the anxiety of thinking like, okay, I gotta be so like careful because I could miss the tiniest little green blip on my screen that could be something that I needed to see, but the sun's behind me washing it out. It literally cripples your ability to think clearly sometimes because you're so honed in on a screen that's not giving you the information you need. So you can obviously tell that I'm hammering home the fact that usability, making this thing work well for the operators is huge. And when you look throughout history, if a fighter jet is built to work for the operators, it just does better in combat. It makes crews more lethal, keeps them safer. So the F-15 and the F-16 were kind of the first jets that were actually built with air crew integration. John Boyd was one of the original designers of these jets, and his big thing was these need to be extremely good for the pilot. They need to work for the operator, which sounds silly, right? But if you look at other generations of aircraft, what you can see is a lot of them were built by politicians. They were built to get as many districts as possible to build parts and to be so multi-role and so multifaceted that it literally wasn't good at anything. It was just mediocre at a lot of things. So it's just really refreshing to me that we're building off of the success of the F-15, the F-15C, which is the air-to-air -air model, the F-15E, which is the family model or the air-to-ground model, also called lovingly the mud hen with two people in that bad boy. I love flying that thing in combat because I could focus my attention outside on sometimes, you know, 16,000 or higher foot mountains that I was flying around, that I was raging around at night with terrain following radar so I could have a weapon systems operator in the back making sure that they were finding the targets, getting all the situational awareness they could while I was keeping us safe up front. Just the legacy of these F-15s, the way they work in combat, how strong they are at completing the mission. It's so cool to me that we're building off of it and integrating new technologies and new abilities into the F-15EX. And another thing is the F-15EX is cost effective in a way. I mean, it's not like we're walking into the dollar store and picking up some F-15EXs. Obviously, these things are going to carry a hefty price tag, but I'll submit to you that anything quality that's worth it, that's going to be extremely effective, is worth a little bit of cost up front. And the cool thing is the F-15EX uses the same infrastructure as the F-15C and the F-15E. You don't have to do a lot of retraining for the maintenance crews, the ground crews, the pilots. You don't have to add in as much of an extra cost as what it would be to completely start from scratch with a new fighter. So these bad boys come in somewhere around $87 million each, just a cool 87, no big deal, Uncle Sam's got us, let's get a couple of these things, put them in the garage, no big deal. But the cool thing is they only cost, and again, only, but in relative terms, $29,000 per flight hour is what you're looking at, and that includes everything. You're talking about fuel, maintenance costs, training, and that also integrates the different simulators that you're gonna need. So at the end of the day, 29,000 isn't bad, and now we're gonna compare that to the F-35. So with the F-35, estimates can vary based on which model it is, how many are gonna actually be produced, but those are coming in at somewhere around $77 million a pop. So about $10 million cheaper than the F-15EX, but the big catch is that the F-35 is gonna be more expensive to operate. You're looking at about $45,000 per flight hour to operate an F-35 which is obviously a massive jump from the 29,000 of the F-15EX. But this is when it gets 
really interesting because the F-35 is only built to fly 8,000 flight hours. Now, my personal opinion is they will extend that out. They'll make adaptions. They'll do whatever they need to do to get that thing to double or maybe even triple that. As you can see in the US inventory, we're pretty good at stretching the life of different airframes. <clears throat> B-52, I think that thing was built in like 1921. And then the F-15 EX though was built to fly for 20,000 flight hours. So right out of the gate, this thing is built for more than double the flight hours of the F-35. And if you extend that thing out and you use it for longer than that 20,000, I think you'll get a much longer service life out of the F-15 EX than you will the F-35, but that's up for debate. So personally, I think it's savvier to purchase the F-15 EX for those reasons, obviously the cost reasons, but also sometimes you need to go backwards. And what I mean by that is if you're fighting an enemy or someone that's kind of going backwards as well and not using the latest technologies, <coughs> balloons, <laughs> do you really need a stealth fighter up there that costs as much to operate when you could have an F-15 EX doing some sort of close air support mission in contested airspace where maybe an F-15 is able to accomplish the mission just as well, if not better, than an F-35. All right, you made it to the end of the video, my friend. I'm a man of my word, so we're at the bonus round. We're gonna talk about the APG-82, which is the Gucci radar that is attached to the F-15 EX. So the APG-82 is like going to the NFL, whereas the predecessor, the APG-70, is like playing peewee football. The APG-70 is a Doppler scanned radar, which means you have to sit there and wait for the thing to just scan the airspace. And I remember flying with this thing being like, is this done yet? You're like sitting there like, come on, let's go. But the APG-82 is an ASA radar and I actually get to fly with that thing in the F-15E as well. And it's incredible how it just works. It's just on and you can see the entire airspace and battlefield. And the APG-82, the ASA radar, it's far more sensitive, reliable, and reaches further than the mechanically scanned APG-70. The APG-82 is the new eagle's eyes, is what people are calling it. And what happens when you have an APG-82 over an APG-70 is you decrease the work load of those in the cockpit that are operating the aircraft at 600 plus miles per hour. So you're able to be more effective. You're able to communicate better. You're able to work with other technologies better, integrate with drones, with satellites, whatever the case may be. And you're not focused on this old school radar. So the APG-82 going into the F-15EX and the F-15E is modernizing that fleet as well. is just an incredible step up. So when I compare the F-15E to the F-15EX, some things I think about is the fact that they both have conformal fuel tanks. CFTs are what the conformal fuel tanks are called, and those just carry a ton of extra gas. Also, there are weapons hard points on that, so you can just load this thing up to the teeth with bombs, with missiles, etc. Oh, and by the way, you can operate the F-15EX or the F-15E, which would be more less likely, the F-15EX can be operated without the conformal fuel tanks, and I've seen that configuration here and there. And what you get out of that is just, again, another ability to just plug and play, pop off a Lego piece here, pop off a Lego piece there, make this thing more air-to-air -air deadly, because if you don't have the conformal fuel tanks on it, then you're able to dogfight better, you don't bleed energy as much. So the F-15EX, in my opinion, with the ability to just more likely to have the CFTs off or not even fly with CFTs in some of the squadrons at all, you have the ability to just have more air-to-air -air focus and be better at dogfights in that F-15EX than you would potentially be in the F-15E. Oh, and by the way, the engines in the F-15EX are being modified. Those things are just beasts. I mean, there's a ton of thrust in the F-15E as well, but having modified engines in the F-15EX is again, just another step up, which makes it even more Gucci. And then talking about the avionics, like I did a little bit ago, the screens and having those massive color displays, the big thing is their color displays. And the F-15E, a lot of the screens you had were what we call green goo. So you're looking at a black screen with green over top, but if you have the ability to have screens that can add color, again, it just helps slow things down so that when you're going Mach 1 with your hair on fire, trying to take out an enemy, you're able to see things a little more clear. You're able to do what's called slow things down on the scope and just watch things happen a little bit more slowly, like they're happening in real time. Instead of happening at 1.5 times the speed of sound time, that's much harder to interpret. So I like the fact that the screens are super usable, they have color displays, and it's just easy to interpret what's going on on those big screens compared to the smaller screens in the F-15E. 
And then obviously you can operate these things with one pilot or you can operate them with a pilot and a Wizzo. So having the ability to do both, having the ability to swap things out, I think is just a plus for the F-15EX. Overall, I love flying the F-15E. F-15EX is just a gucci -er version of that. I'm really excited for this thing to enter the inventory. It's gonna be really awesome to see what it does. Thanks so much for watching this video. The best compliment you can give me is just watch another video. It would mean a lot to me. Thanks so much for being here. Most of all, have a great day.